Yes, you shall, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Some more Gran Turismo 7. Now, guys, I thought I'd give you a quick look at my wheel settings, even though there's not much wheel settings in Gran Turismo. And then we're going to jump into um, probably the least liked of any car set up um, by quite a lot of people is uh, MRs. So uh, mid-engined rear-wheel drive cars. Um, I'm probably just going to be bringing uh, a good few NSX builds to the channel. Um, we're going to be doing a road build. We're going to be doing a PP600. And the one that you're going to see in today's video, guys, is the NSXR. So the Honda NSXR from um, 2002. And we're going to be building it to a uh, full grip spec. So I'm going to show you the correct way and how to get the best handling out of an MR. And... Uh, It'll be BHP wise. I'm not sure what it's going to fall at. Um, you'll see in the video so far it's pushing 290 BHP. And then um, he's sitting at pretty much, what is it? Two seconds, guys. So it'll, it'll be sitting at 644. And Gran Turismo is just so long to get to stuff. I'm going to chop out all the loading screens, don't worry about that guys. So yeah, so once you've put li literally like all the upgrades on the NSX that you could possibly need to try and achieve the most amount of grip and handling potential out of it. And it'll be sat at 644.77. And I mean, the car at the moment running 290bhp, um, red line 7100. The weight on this car is pretty cool, it's quite light, weighing 1143 kg, but um, before we go into the MR and uh, how to get the best out of an MR, and like with the mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars, to be honest guys, they do just have really horrible characteristics. Um, Front-wheel drive cars are really predictable, uh, rear-wheel drive again really predictable and all-wheel drive same again but when it comes to MRs, MRs can be such a pain, just such a pain just to get it to not feel very light and floaty on the front and just do this weird pivot thing um, and if you've ever driven an MR and you're not really used to them you'll know straight away when you've tried to take it quick around any corner especially if you've not spent that much time actually tuning it so um we are on the logitech g920 um and we're using the resolution one wheel converter Um we are still running gran turismo 7 on the ps4 Um i just haven't picked up a uh, resolution 2 yet so i can um use the logitech g920 on um the next gen but um I, I will pick one of them up at some point and i just really don't feel like having to like replay everything and to me guys the frame rate's not that bad the graphics aren't that bad and the tunes and everything the settings are just absolutely they're all the same guys so um we do have a lot of wheels which is good because when Gran Turismo dropped, there weren't really any wheel settings at all. But um, I do use a controller as well as some of these buttons. I'm just not remapping from like the G29 or the G923 to the actual Logitech. I just hate remapping buttons. It's, it's just such a pain. So for stuff like um, traction control... Um, Basically, it's just traction control and just actual, like, the 360-degree rotation of the camera I'll use the controller for. Um, and just so awkward to navigate around things. Really, really awkward. So this here is really what you want to pay attention to. So I'm going to show you my wheel settings. So the calibration and the wheel, if you look at it, right, you want it. Do you get what I mean? Your dead zone, your dead zone is there. Um, if you hit pedal calibration, this is how I have all my, my pedals from my Logitech G920 set up. So the clutch runs from 12.5% minimum up to an 87.5% maximum. 
Um, the brakes, if you notice that your brake pedal is really, really stiff. Um, I do have it on 0.0%, uh, so it's a minus. So when the brake pedal is disengaged, like, it, it, it's a minimum force. You will have to start it from zero. And then, obviously, when I hit maximum force on my, my brake pedal with a calibration, um, I've got it at 27.8%, but that's how I prefer that. Um, if you wanted, you could increase that. And obviously, the more you press on the, the actual brake pedal or the pedal that you're calibrating, the more it's going to increase the maximum percentage. Um, when it comes to the accelerator, um, mine was really odd because mine had um, a maximum of 95.5% and it was just it just felt really strange. So you want your accelerator to be 100% maximum when it's depressed. Um, and the minimum force will be like 5.0%, where the minimum force with the brake is as soon as you touch on it, that's your minimum force. And then the 27.8% then is going to be a maximum braking force for me. Um, and the handbrake I've not really bothered with. And the clutch, uh, again, if, if using a fully customizable racing transmission, um, the racing transmission is a sequential box. So it's got no clutch, so you will be using your paddle shifters on the wheel. Um, but if you're using a heat shifter and you're using a fully customizable manual transmission, you're going to have to engage the clutch pedal. But there is a little cheat where if you install the fully customizable manual transmission and you ignore your heat shift and don't use your clutch and just use your paddle shifters on the steering wheel, it will ignore the clutch altogether and act. So you will save a little bit of money. Um, I've, I've I've tested it. There's not that much difference in gear shifts, especially when you change the clutch and the flywheel. So they're my wheel settings, as far as I can show you in these me um, menus. Um, and this is a good place to start. If you haven't calibrated your pedals um, or anything to do with wheel, just calibrate it like this. So I, and I'll always have that on 0% like that and do that. And for me, that's perfect. So that's them, and we'll we'll come straight out of here, and we'll go into this. And for me personally, guys, when I'm tuning cars for handling and just basic grip setups, and to see what the potential is of some cars with just like a, pretty much like a basic default tune that I put on stuff. And um, we'll go over to Asia, and we'll go to the Suzuka circuit, and we'll go to time trial, and we'll go to full course, and I'll always pick known. The temperature does vary sometimes, um, even though you're picking known and you'd expect it to be, but it's just realism. You'll never get the bang same temperature every single time you go onto a track. So um, what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to jump into the Suzuka circuit time trial. Um, I'm going to show you the overall performance and handling of the MR in the way that we have it specced at the moment. Now, the way we've got the MR specced out at the moment, um, there's no tune in it whatsoever. So all these parts are literally just bolt-ons, you could say. So, I mean... No traction control. I don't drive in this. If you're driving in any view at all on Gran Turismo 7, right, I know this view looks awkward, but this view, driving in this view, can shave four seconds off a lap time. And I've, I've put that to practice, guys, because this is not a view that I'm comfortable driving in, or it wasn't. Um, and I've been watching Super GT and stuff, and he, he drives in this, and his lap times are really, really quick. And you get a better field of view on the corner and where you're coming out of the corner um, in this. And the same with MRs, I mean, you can be gentle with them, you can give them a bit of a rag. Uh, it depends on how you've got it set up. But um, there is a wrong way and a correct way of setting MRs up. And again, guys, there's no tune on this season. There's no tune. I've not edited the suspension. I've not edited uh, the um, aerodynamics, the differential, anything whatsoever. I've literally just specced it out um, as it's... A project build going on its way to being a fully fledged race car and that's what I'm going to aim to achieve with this NSX um, and I'm hoping at the end of this video you'll be a little bit wiser on how to tune them our cars and um, there's quite a few cars Porsches uh, the what the setup you'll be running for the MR 
it'll be a little bit different but we'll get to our, our cars at a later video so for this video guys we're just going to focus on the NRs um, and we'll, we'll jump into the build and then we'll we'll jump into the parts that I've got on and we'll jump into what we're set up and again they are just bolt-ons I'm only going to just do this quick hot lap and I'm not overly keen in this because um, I'm talking I'm not fully concentrating so uh, again with the physics changes make sure that you do break in the straight line make sure to be quick off the accelerator when you're wanting to get your turn don't be scared just to tap that brake slightly and then just just get on it guys to be honest and again um, just some small details can really really break the build and with the NSX with it being an MR um, and the same with the Clio, the Clio V6, believe it or not, that's an MR, so that's mid-engine rear-wheel drive. Um, and that's a fun-looking car, it's pretty quick, but it is an absolute pig to drive, an absolute pig. Um, and NSX is, to be honest, again, MR, um, the Ford GT, again, MR. So, hopefully, at the end of this video, guys, you're going to um, know how to tune and build uh, any MR, so mid-engined, rear-wheel drive car in Gran Turismo. We'll, we'll go a bit hard on this lap, guys. And then uh, I'll show you the, after this lap, I'll show you the final two settings um, on the wheel, which are the actual ones that you can do on your, your controller, settings, in-game, before you start your race. And as you can see guys, we've got quite a lot of grip. As you can hear from the uh, strain we're putting into the tyres. Uh, I did get a 120 out of this 290bhp NSXR from 2002 when it's set up. And we are looking to build this to um, PP700, so we will be increasing the bhp. Um, I'm hoping I can get it to sit around 4, 470 maybe. As you can see there guys, we're nearly, nearly 4 seconds faster already. And the MRs in this, in this setup, with um, just full track orientation in mind for the footwork, so your suspension, your alloy setup, um, your aerodynamics, and again, I'll do this quick hot lap here and we'll go straight in, I'll show you the parts that are on the car then we'll show you the tune um, even though again they're just bolt-ons uh, and then I don't know if I'll finish the video or I tell you what I'll probably uh, we'll build it to PP700 maybe but um, this is literally the correct way to set up and tune an MR car in Gran Turismo 7 should have dropped down to fourth there I do need to change um, the gear ratio slightly I reckon but that will be obviously when we increase the BHP but the, the car accelerates so quick we've got so much torque and so much pace say it's a, a fully stock engine so 219 there so you work that out <laughs> um, and this this is pretty much the best setup you can have on a, an MR car. Pretty much the best. So um, I'm not sure if we can actually control the settings. Yeah, we can here. So the steering, force feedback. I have the force feedback max torque on two, and I have the force feedback sensitivity on one. Um, if it does feel a little bit light for you, um, for me personally, uh, it's personal choice, your own preference. So I wouldn't change the force feedback max torque. Two feels very comfortable, but I would maybe look at the force feedback sensitivity slightly. But you you do want the input on the wheel to fully be registered to the car. So I have it on two and one, and pretty much with Gran Turismo, that's literally all. That's literally it guys, It's we don't have many settings to work with, unlike Forza Horizon 5 and um, a set of course and things like that. But what we do have to work with, um, 
again, it's quite easy to set up. And the MR cars, they look beautiful. And they're not used that much because they are so difficult to tune. Uh, they're so difficult to get around the corner fast and aggressive. But have you seen from my two laps there, we, we come out and we did a mediocre lap, I suppose. Um, and they went for a hot lap. Um, we are running racing mediums on the car. I do feel racing mediums are the best tyre to go with. I know the racing softs are going to give you more grip, but to get a real good understanding of how to set your car up, you really want to be building the car off of a, a foundation that's running uh, racing medium tyres. Um, if you're enjoying the videos guys, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below on what you think to the video, what you think to the build. Um, I'm hoping you've been able to hear everything that I've said. Um, if it is a little bit low in places, my order of volumes, uh, don't worry. Um, I'll sort all that out in the actual editing on the video so you can hear everything I'm saying. Um, yeah, guys, there's not really much more to say about the NSX uh, from 2002 other than it's, it's an amazing car. It's really worth the money putting into it. Uh, it's something unique to see on the track, something other than front engine rear wheel drive cars. Um, out of the two NSX's um, from the old stock this is the better looking one um, I believe it's the one that's most valuable to put money into uh, it's a little bit more expensive to buy than say the one from 992 but you are getting a, an overall improvement in the package of the car so again guys this is a, a full tuning guide a full review for Gran Turismo 7 on the Honda NSX Type R from 2002 how to fully build with the correct parts for grip and handling uh, how to get the, the best overall performance and potential out of this amazing iconic Japanese sports car so I want to say a big shout out to all the subscribers who have subscribed over the last few weeks and months thank you guys so much we appreciate your support um, thank you to all the existing subscribers who have been here since dot day. If we want for you guys, we won't still be doing the channel. I want to say a big apology for the little gaps and um, sort of like minimal frequency of uploading videos. Again, we're still trying to find somewhere new to live. Um, so you'll have to bear with me on that. But for today, guys, we're focusing on Grand Turismo 7. We're focused on uh, having a laugh and uh, enjoying some gaming. So, uh I don't think we need to. <laughs> the car's just it, the car impresses me so much compared to like um, an RX7 or even a Supra. I mean, if you give me the choice of an RX7 FD2, the NSXR from 2002, and uh, a Toyota Supra, um, I'd, I'd pick the the nah, the NSX all day long. I know everybody bangs on about the Toyota Supras. And but and the Mazda RX-7, but for me, the NSX, it just looks fantastic. Um, I think the styling is somewhat iconic. Um, we'll never see this type of styling ever again. It's just beautiful. So uh, yeah, so I think we'll head out of this replay as I've been bending your ears far too long. Um, I'll show you the ranking board just right quick and um, just where we sit at the moment. Um, and obviously because it's coming in at a PP644 it's going to be hitting the uh, PP700s so that was time that we just set there guys which was 219.358 uh, the time I set last night when I was just building the car just making sure I got everything correct from the video um, the fastest lap was uh, 220.783 and that was like my fastest lap out of six laps. Um, I just really wanted to push it. And I, that, like I say, I've, I've gone to bed, I've, I've, I've had a sleep. I've, I've got back up, I've turned it on, and we've pulled a 219.358 from a hot lap. So uh, we're going to exit all this. We'll exit all that. 
Hope you're enjoying the the new up, the uh, new update from Gran Turismo. I do think it's one of the best updates that we've had. Um, just on overall things we're able to do. To be honest, it's really nice not having stuff uh, locked behind roulette tickets and stuff like that. Because there was just no chance in hell I was going to get carbon propeller shafts and titanium connecting rods and everything. So to have the uh, update 1.34 just give us all this super cool stuff just in ultimate. Um, so we go for a stage one re weight reduction. Um, basically, it's it's really basic. All it's going to be removing, it's going to be removing um, the spare tyre, the air conditioning, and it's going to be providing you with a lightweight battery. Um, and th for me, I believe like to keep an, a good balance on the car, um, especially to go for a PP700 maybe, um, f to get the best out of the MR and to tune it properly for handling and grip in Gran Turismo 7, you want to go with a stage 1 weight reduction. I'll show you all the pages you want to put on the ballast, even though we're not using that, but I'll show you in the tune in a second. The power restrictor, which is very important. Then you go to semi racing, as you can see, and putting on the fully customizable LSD and putting on the fully customizable manual transmission. But bear in mind the little chip t uh, hack sort of thing. If you ignore the heat shifter and the clutch pedal, you use this and use your paddle shifters, it will sort of give you an automatic clutch. And it is a little bit cheaper than um, the fully customizable racing transmission, which is a sequential. Um, going racing mediums. Fully customizable racing suspension, racing brake pads. Going to extreme, we're running the carbon ceramic brake kit, which I would advise over these two for the NSX. Um, in the ultimate, and as you can see, guys, this was basically a tune build on how to get the best handling and overall potential for grip and just overall stableness. Um, a lot of people find the MR cars are really unstable and the characteristics are really just out whack to what they used to, to be honest. So this is how you set up the MR, whether it's uh, a Honda NSX that we're using in this video or it's the Ford GT or the Clio V6. Any MR car, this is how you want to be setting it up. Um, but these are not the keys to the build. The keys to the build will be your alloy setup, believe it or not. So we'll come back out of here now. You've seen all the parts that are on the car. And again, guys, we've just focused it on the um, actual grip and handling. So if we go over here, we'll go into the tuning sheets. Again, guys, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. What you think to the video, what you think to the build, what do you think to me advice on how to get the best out of an MR, so mid-engined rear-wheel drive car in Gran Turismo 7. Uh, as you can see, everything's stock, aerodynamics, ECU, suspension, wheel alignment, differential. Just make sure you they put all these parts on, guys. These parts are all needed. And then if we come out of here. And what we'll do, I'll show you now the key to the build when building an MR car. And especially the Honda NSX are from uh, 2002. So when you go into your GT Auto, you want to go into car customization. And these parts are really, really important. When you're picking your alloy setup, we love them. So we always throw the spoon, spoon alloys on. Offset. Right, you want to put your offset to wide. You want to put the rim width to wide. And then you want to go all the way up. And you want to put 19s on. Right. Now that is like the most important part of setting up the Honda NSX Type R from 2002 and Gran Turismo 7. When it comes to grip handling and getting the overall most potential out of its performance and getting quick lap times. So that. Um, the offset. As you can see the offset's only on the front. It's going to give the car more stability. Um, the wide tyres are going to give uh, more tyre surface to contact with and the 19 inch alloy wheels 
are going to help with acceleration and to limit um, actual wheel slip. So uh, if you find that your MR cars are spinning out too much, not getting enough grip, um, 19s, wide, wide, simple as that. Um, I won't be bobbing them on because I've already done it. Um, custom parts, front, we've gone for luck as I've not touched the aerodynamics, so type A. On the sides, type A. On the rear, type A. Wing, we're using the standard parts. Um, if you want aids, depending on luck and if you want to add more downforce, but for this build and everything, we're going for the standard part. Uh, racing items, we don't run no bonnet pins, we're running toe up, which is a type A, we're running a full roll cage, which is a type C. Uh, in other, we're running yellow bulbs, we're running stock number plates, Cali caliper colour is blue, and that's about it, guys. So, that's basically how to fully set up the Honda NSX R from 2002 as a perfect track spec. So there are all the parts you're going to need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fly and I'm going to fully spec it out. So I'm going to put all the rest of the parts on it and get it up to the uh, PP700. Um, and then I'll show you guys the tune. I'll show you what time it performs. And um, you'll see all the parts that are on it. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the videos, guys. Again, the um, NSX-R from 2002, the Honda NSX-R from 2002, MR. Uh, this is a perfect way to set this car up in Gran Turismo 7. Um, if you want to learn how to drive MR cars, and especially the Honda NSX, then please, please, please follow this build perfectly, as I've shown you in the video so far. Um, we're going to show you now specking the engine out, um, show you what time it pulls. And to be honest, guys, I'm just really, really pleased that I've been able to bring this build and this tune to the channel. So, again, guys, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below on what you think to the video. I know this video has been rather, rather long compared to my usual videos. And if you've stayed all the way through, um, I hope you have learned a thing or two about tuning MR cars in Gran Turismo 7. Um, and again, we're going back to the same track. We're going to pick the same time trial. Um, we're going to pick... Um, noon as always as we always use the same time of day when we're doing the test builds before we um, bring them as a success to the channel so uh, stay tuned for a lot more Gran Turismo 7 content um, I'm going to throw up a few more builds on a Forza Horizon 5 we've got a Ford Escort Cosworth A Class which is just absolutely incredible so stay tuned for that if you guys would like to see any builds, tunes, tips, hints or any help or advice that you would like with Gran Turismo 7, whether that be um, on building a car or tuning a car and the same goes for Forza Horizon 5, please feel free to leave that in the comments section down below. And until the next video guys, happy racing, stay safe, peace.
eyes, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's fair.